Hey, my name's Andrew Gon and I am a knitwear designer based in Asheville, North Carolina, and you are watching my knitting podcast. This is a about twice a month podcast where I come and talk to you about all the design work I've been doing and generally talk about all things knitting. And I am excited to talk with you today about uh, the design I have been working on, which is done, and I'm going to be starting a second sample. Um, that is the Willow Pullover, so I'll be talking about that for a while. I'm going to talk about the design I'm wearing, Helianthus, and a pattern update I had worked on for that, and the results. Um, and I'm also going to talk about a new release that I have that is coming out in just two weeks on June 21st. Yeah, two Fridays from now. Um, and also I want to talk about a design I'm just about to start, but I mentioned this in a previous podcast. I'm just going to kind of give a real brief kind of teaser of what I'm doing with that design and then I'll share more as I get further into the process. And at the very end, I want to talk with you about what my plans for my next YouTube video are and get some of your feedback. Um, so. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I hope you enjoy hanging out and just listening to me talk about knitting. And I, as always, love to hear feedback about anything I talk about. Um, I try to solicit specific things I want to hear from you about. Like last time I was talking about spit splicing and I asked what other people's experiences were and it was really cool to hear people talk about that. Some people say they use it all the time or people talk about which kinds of yarn they prefer to use that on. So um, just know anything I'm talking about, uh, I always want to hear what your thoughts are if you have any um, feedback or other related things you want to talk about. Just leave that in the comments. Okay, so I am just kind of jump into it. I think I'm ready. All right, let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about for a little while is my newest design that is currently in testing, and that is the Willow Pullover. When I showed this to you last, it was not yet finished, and I finished and blocked this first sample, and I just... Oh, I love how this stitch pattern looks after blocking. It really relaxes and opens up. Um, this is an eyelet eyelet basket weave stitch that's made with just knits pearls and yarn overs and I will try it on to give you an idea what kind of fit it has. I wanted a relaxed fit without being super oversized and it is perfectly what I wanted and I um, wanted, I, I generally like crew necks sweaters that are pretty close. I know some people don't prefer that, um, but I was especially thinking that I would like to style this with a collared shirt underneath. So um, for that reason in particular, and because it has a bit more relaxed, I did a little bit more relaxed of a crew neckline than I have done with some of my other sweaters. And here it is. It's got lots of ease, but it's not ginormous. And then the sleeves actually have no decreases at all, so it's a straight sleeve, um, which makes them feel really roomy, um, but they're not like balloon sleeve either, they don't increase. Um, and it feels super cozy, and I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm really excited to be able to actually wear it in the early fall when the release happens. Um, generally I do try to not wear my samples too much until the release happens so that any photos I take leading up to the release, the sweater's in like immaculate condition. Um, but it works out for this because it's really too warm to be wearing this right now anyways. Um, so test knitters are getting started on this and then I am working alongside them actually to make a second version. Um, and I will show you my swatch belt. So I just did this yesterday. I'm doing a fingering weight plus mohair swatch. And I am using Biche and Bouche 
Le Petit Lamb's Wool and Le Petit Silk and Mohair in their color gray beige. And my little my little preview thing, it looks kind of dark, but it's a pretty light um, gray. It's, it calls it beige, but I would call it more of like a um, gray oatmeal kind of color. And this is so lightweight and airy um, while still not looking like it looks decently solid, but it I'm really excited for this version. This is like, I wish you could feel it. It's like, I'm not holding anything. Um, but the stitch pattern is not as crisp, of course, with the mohair, but I think that the pattern is bold enough, especially with the eyelets, um, kind of breaking up the knit and purl sections, that the fuzzed over version still looks defined enough to give really cool texture um, and I'm really excited about this one so I will be working on that and I'm not sure if I've talked about this recently but a sort of ongoing thing I'm having to contend with is that whenever I come up with a design I'm like oh it will look great in this color it would look great with this variation and I'm frequently interested in doing a whole bunch of versions of the one design, but unfortunately, because I'm trying to actually make my design work into a business and be effective with how I'm spending my time, and knitting the samples is definitely the most time-intensive part of getting a design done. Of course, I love knitting. I want to spend lots of time knitting, um, but if I'm trying to release about a design a month, which is my goal, and I'm still working up to that because basically anytime something comes up. A um, pattern a month for me right now is my best case scenario, and as we know in life, the best case scenario just does not always happen, so um, I think I'm probably around at like eight to ten patterns a year, sort of right. Anyways, I I'm trying to keep myself from doing multiple samples unless I feel like I have a really good reason so that I'm not giving myself too many things that I have to knit when I have to be knitting them on certain timelines to make sure I have the samples out um, for the release. And this version, I decided that it was worth it to do the second sample. I really wanted to, but I was like, this is so different from the 100% wool um, in the original version that I think it will show more people options for what they can do with the pattern. and. Um, you know, you don't knit, there's no extra work in writing the pattern to do this version. Um, sorry, that's not going to focus, but you've seen it. Um, but anyway, I just think that this mohair version is going to show a pretty different look of what a garment made with the same pattern can be. Um, but... I have to basically keep telling myself that I can't do two versions of everything, but as we go through the rest of the things I've been working on, you may notice that I have been doing multiple versions of a lot of other things too, but okay. Um, what else do I want to say about this? So this design is going to be released in early September. It's going to be my first fall pattern. Um, the test knit is about three months long, June, July, August. Yeah. Um, so I have to do... If I want a pattern to come out in early September, I have to be getting the test knit started by the beginning of summer um, to make sure it's ready. So I sort of have a offset by a pretty substantial amount for what season I'm knitting for instead of knitting for summer generally. Um, I'm usually knitting for at least a season or two ahead to try to get my design work to all line up. Okay. So I'm going to jump into talking about the next thing, which is some updates about the pattern I'm wearing right now. Okay, so what I'm wearing right now is my original sample of the pattern Helianthus, which is a tank designed in Ritual Dyes uh, Undyne, which is a 
cotton and linen blend that's fingering weight. And this is a pattern I released last summer. I have now knit two solid versions in addition to the striped version. Um, and if you've been following along here on Instagram, you may have seen that I had plans to add bust starts into this pattern. So my pattern, the Sunshine Tea, which there's a bit along for right now. I'm not going to talk about that too much today. Uh, oh, I forgot to even add that to my list, but there's a knit along still happening and there's still almost a full month to join in and um, we have some fun prizes. Okay, I'm distracting myself. Um, so when I made the Sunshine Tea, that was my first pattern that I ever put bust starts into with much help from my tech editor and the reason I've kind of been slow on the slower side to figure out how to incorporate bust starts into my patterns is because I don't have a body type, body shape that needs them. So it's a lot more challenging to add in uh, a completely new aspect of a design because for me when I feel like I can write something but I really have to knit it to then say, did this work? Is this aligning with how I thought it would work. Um, so for the Sunshine Tea, I knit the bust starts and then I put and then I said, okay, these pattern instructions make what they're supposed to, but then I frogged that section because my sample doesn't actually need them. Um, but then it was really helpful for my tech editor to help make sure that the fit would be proper for someone who did need them and it's been tested and the bus starts worked out for people. So I was like, okay, I wanna go back to another more fitted design, which I feel that bus starts are a lot more um, advantageous with a fitted design because the difference of the front and back is just gonna be more when it's a closer fitting garment. Um, so I thought helianthus would be a great one to do that with and that since it's all stockinette in the body it would be a, and striped and solid versions the same way as, Heli as the sunshine tea it wouldn't be too much trouble to go back and do that and basically it ended up being a lot more trouble than I thought so first thing was that this is bottom up and the sunshine tea is top down and how to do the short rows in reverse was actually more complicated than I expected um, I've never done short rows where the short rows are getting smaller and smaller as you go instead of getting bigger and bigger. So the way it's set up bottom up is that you're knitting a trapezoid, trapezoid and you go longest, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. So all the double stitches are not worked until the very end when you go across all the double stitches. Anyway, um, that just took some figuring out. And then when I went to actually go knit the trial version, as I had done with the Sunshine Tea, I started a new version of this tank and I went to go knit the trial version and it originally had just one um, of the colorful stripes. And it took me getting, this is exactly why I have to knit things to be like, is there an oversight? Because both of me and my tech editor did not realize how this was not gonna work. Which in res retrospect, it seems like a no brainer. But the smaller size of bust starts was only gonna go through one um, white and one big stripe, but that would make it so that in the back, in the front, if you maintained red, pink, red, pink, in the back, there would be two pinks in a row. So the bust starts actually have to cover the entire repeat of red, white, pink, white, entirely for the back and the front to both have aligning um, stripes and that would mean that the smallest size bust start possible would be like three inches of fabric, which is usually gonna be uh, the sort of range the largest size bust start option should be. And it seemed kind of weird, why would I add in bust starts if they can only add in the large version only? Um, 
And anyway, I felt conflicted and I was sad and disappointing because I already told people, hey, I'm going to be offering this and uh, just being newer to adding them in, I couldn't, didn't foresee how it just wasn't going to work with the stripes. But I have knit solid versions and I know a lot of people have knit solid versions of the tank. This is a red version, which is where I had the, I had the pink leftover from this one and the red leftover from this one to be able to make that new one. Um, so, Long story short, right now on my blog there are instructions for adding buff starts in two sizes to the solid version of Helianthus, but I decided to not put that in as an official pattern update that got added into the text of the entire pattern since it only works for the solid version and the stripey version is really the main product of the pattern and the solid version is like a bonus you can use the same pattern to make a solid one, just leave out the stripes. So um, if you are interested in knitting a solid version, which I have this also in yellow, and I really love the solid version, just a plain uh, flowy but comfy uh, summer tank. And I, I've knit all mine cropped, but you can easily just knit it to any length that you want to. Um, there are now is on my blog the fully written out instructions to add bus starts into this. So I apologize for if anyone was excited or waiting for being able to knit a stripey version with the bus starts. It's not impossible, but it didn't work out well enough that I felt good about putting it in. And an additional th thing that I've been thinking about is just aesthetically how bus starts like look with a striping pattern because it inherently disrupts the stripes even trying to make it look as nice as possible. I have heard people be happy with how it looks with stripes and people who are like oh I wouldn't knit bus starts but I don't want to have it disrupt the stripes in that way so I kind of need to think more about if adding bus starts into stripey patterns is ever something I want to do, even if um, it is possible. So um, if you're not familiar with bus starts, you haven't used them before, uh, I hope that was okay to listen to. I know um, I'm getting into some pretty specific sort of technical things there. But that is something I ended up spending quite a bit of time on to kind of feel like I don't have a lot to show for it, but I learned a lot going into new designs when I would and would not want to put that in as an option and when it will be more easily compatible or not with a pattern. Okay, um, next up I want to talk about a design that is going to be released in just two weeks. Okay, so last time I recorded one of these, I was wearing the purple sample of the iris top, which is a fitted crop top worked in 3x3 three three rib. And I just this past week finished my second version, which is in the color fur and is a just gorgeous dark forest green. Um, it's the same yarn. They're both earthy sock from Explore Knits and Fibers and I just love all of Allie's colors that she does um, and I was knitting this at my local knit night this past week and someone was like, oh is that for like a little person? I think they meant like a um, young child. I'm like, no, no, it's for me. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to try it on right now, but I'm going to put some photos in. Um, but this stitch pattern just opens right up and makes a nice, beautiful body hugging fit. And this soft, this yarn is super soft and super next to skin soft, which was a big priority for me deciding what I want it to use. Um, but as I've been knitting this green sample, I've been like, I feel like I've been knitting this pattern forever. And I was like, I didn't think two samples would be that much because even though I already talked about that, I was like, well, it's cropped, it doesn't have sleeves. But then I remembered, oh, this is actually the third time I've knit this pattern because I knit an entire version 
that I then decided to make a couple of fit changes from um, before I even did the purple version. So I don't know where that one is. I kind of stashed it away somewhere. I ended up not frogging it because I also wasn't going to have enough yarn. Um, anyway, that one's around somewhere. It's mm, not really wearable because I use two different yarns that the colors don't match in it. Um, but I decided to change the fit. So I've really knit this three entire times. I was like, okay, that makes a lot more sense why I feel like I've been knitting this forever. Um, but I'm done and I'm so happy with these two colors together. So I decided with this one that I wanted to knit two samples because with them being a smaller project, I didn't think it would be too huge of a time investment, but I really wanted to show both an option of a really bright and fun color and then a like more neutral classic color. And um, yeah, I hope to be able, I think I'm gonna style them both like pretty summery for the main photo shoots, but in general, I wanna be able to kind of show, um, you know, that you could, incorporate this in a wide range of different outfits and just the color is like plenty enough to take a whole design in a different direction anyway that's what I'm trying to not do with every design but <laughs> with a sweater knitting the whole second version is a lot more but okay so this design is going to come out June 21st which is two weeks from today and Allie is going to be putting out a pre-order of this yarn, which is very exciting because the Explore Knits and Fibridge yarn is not something you can just go and order every time, um, like anytime you want. It is available in specific shop updates or pre-orders. I don't know if it's all actually pre-orders now, um, but we are going to do four colors for that and the um, pre-order is going to go live the day of the release. So. If you are interested in knitting this top, be sure to sign up for my newsletter, which is linked below. Uh, that's going to be the only place you'll find the release discount, which is for the first three days of the pattern release. Um, newsletter subscribers get 20% off the pattern. And then I will have all the specific instructions you need on the morning release to uh, what you need to do to make sure you can get, uh, get some yarn in that pre-order. Um, and... I'm extremely excited to see uh, people knit versions in the other colors that are going to be in the pre-order and my testers have also knit beautiful versions in a wide range of different fingering weight yarns. Um, as with all my designs, when the release happens, I'm going to do a tester showcase where I put on my blog a photo of each tester's projects and detailed information, including what yarn they used. Um, so that's a really good idea if you, for any reason, miss the pre-order for the yarn or just want to use something different, uh, you know, there's a lot of different yarn options of what you could use. Some people are using like variegated or speckled yarns and that's been really cute. Um, I don't tend to gravitate towards those a lot, but I have really liked, um, how they've worked up in this design. Um, and... I just did first photo shoot for the purple sample this week and I will put a photo in here <laughs> and we ha me and my partner had seen a place along the highway near us that had a field of poppies several weeks ago and I was hoping that we could go and get a photo there and when we showed up, the poppies were completely done, but the poppies were interplanted with another purple flower that then were super beautiful. The um, poppies kind of overpowered them before, but I think it's Larkspur. If someone can tell from the photo, I tried to look it up. I had worked at a flower shop in the past and we um, got a lot of Larkspur and it looked just like that flower, but I don't know if Larkspur is just similar looking. Anyway, it ended up being really gorgeous and with the purple flowers and the purple top and not what I was planning on. Um, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it ended up being a really special place to end up doing the photo shoot and it wasn't even exactly what I imagined, but I think it was even better. Um, and then this weekend I'm gonna do a photo shoot with the 
green sample. I'm calling them photo shoots, but it's just my partner taking photos of me with our camera that I'm recording on. Um, but we are gonna go to a local um, park, state forest, uh, where the rhododendrons are hopefully gonna be in bloom online. Um, I saw them last summer, but I didn't know exactly when it was that they're blooming. Um, but it's supposed to be early to mid June, so hopefully that's right now. Um, but we'll see what happens, and over the next couple weeks, between now and the release, I'll be sharing more photos and more details of that design. Um, and I really hope some of you are excited about knitting it. Um, I'd really love to see other people's versions of this one. I definitely feel like this design is super wearable. My summer wardrobe is basically high-waisted shorts or high-waisted pants plus some form of crop top. So um, once these photo shoots are done, I can start at putting those samples into my actual day-to-day -day wardrobe and I'm really excited about that. Okay, and I have one more design I want to talk to you about today, so let's jump into that. Okay, so this is my very newest design that I've just started this past week, and when I have a new design I'm starting on, the very first thing I'll do is swatching, and then I'll kind of simultaneously make the first version of the schematic, so determine what I want the measurements to be with all all of the measurements for all of the sizes and then I take the information from the swatches and the schematic and use that to actually grade and write the pattern, um, find out actual stitch counts and actual lines of text for instructions. Um, but a lot of times the whole swatching process is like an hour, I knit one swatch, block it, measure the gauge, I'm good to go. This time I've spent a lot more time um, playing with different stitch patterns and different edging and my original vision was that I was going to do half fisherman's rib in this DK weight yarn um, but then I decided this is actually half brioche and I decided the look is basically identical um, it's kind of you just knit it differently um, but I felt like the flow of knitting the half brioche was actually nicer than the flow of knitting um, the half fisherman's rim. So it looks pretty much like classic brioche slash fisherman's rib on this side, but then on the back, this is a, a much flatter sort of base. I don't know how well you can tell that, um, but this is more like raised ridges and this is a bit more flat. So I feel like it will be nice for that flatter part on the inside. And then it makes it so that the whole accordion stretchiness is not quite as intense as with full brioche or full fisherman's rib. Um, which is good because I think the give of the ribbed fabric is nice, but um, I didn't want it to be too squishy in or too prone to stretching out. So. Um, this is my original idea, but then, oh here, let me show you the yarn for this. So this is Ampersand Fibers, which is made by Le Mercury Yarn Shop um, on the West Coast. And this is the base Jensen DK. And the color is Grizzale 01. Don't know if I'm pronouncing any of this right, but it is 100% in US Coradale, which is similar to Merino, and it's super soft, and this is a natural gray, and it's super beautiful, and I really love working with the natural colors of fiber, um, and I was really excited to work with this. And I do like the fabric it made, but I had this silk mohair and I've knit, I actually had this left over from a project that I knit it with a very similar color gray and I really liked how the lighter mohair and the gray worked up together and I was like I'll do a swatch and see how I like them together and I was like oh I'm definitely doing this so I'm going to actually do this version which is, is the mohair 
and that you're in it up together and it just makes such a it the fabric feels and looks just as solid but it's like less dense I think it's less dense than that even though it's a heavier total weight um, so I'm really excited about that and then I like the mohair compared to like the mohair with the fingering weight yarn where it's a big proportion of the fabric is made of mohair with the mohair plus DK weight yarn it's more of a touch of mohair um, because the mohair and the mohair is much smaller of a yarn than the original yarn so and I hope you can see in here it kind of just has a little variation in color um, from that the mohair being not the same color as the yarn. I don't know that that's picking up very well, but they're different colors, so this adds like a extra lightness, and then you can see it kind of, um, it almost gleams a little bit where the silk strand that holds the mohair together is in the fabric. Okay, so as you can see here, I have two different edgings on the swatch. One side I tried I-cord bind off, which I liked, and then the other side I tried the, um, like how it would be if I did a collar in normal one by one rib, and I decided I wasn't enthused with either of these. I think this looks really nice, the I-cord, but I thought that would be kind of good edging for like a shawl or scarf made of this fabric, but kind of felt it was a little too minimal for what I wanted for this design. And then I kept just feeling sort of dissatisfied with how the one by one rib looked with the half brioche. Cause they're kind of, they're almost like too similar, but I did want to have some form of edging. So what I've gone with after a whole bunch of swatching is doing this double knit stockinette edging. So this is going to be the bottom of the sweater. And then here's like working it, decreasing the fabric and that's kind of how the cuff will be. And then I'll do a similar sort of thing for the collar. The collar, I'm really just going to have to do it in real life and see because it's difficult for a swatch to really mimic how the collar needs to curve. Um, so I'm just gonna have to experiment in real life, but I liked that this double knit section, um, it's still pretty minimal looking. It doesn't look like there's a lot going on or anything, but there's a clear contrast between the half brioche and the edging. So anyway, probably thought about that more than I meant to, but I just... I love getting to talk about what I've been working on because I've just been spending a lot of time thinking about all those kinds of details this past week. But in the future, you'll get to see what the actual shape and um, style of the sweater is going to be. Okay, hint, it's a raglan. <laughs> but uh, next week, I hope to get all those numbers calculated. Pattern actually wrote up and it cast on. So next time I'm talking to you, I should have at least the start of that sweater. Um, to be shown to you and then that is my hope is that that is going to be my October release for the fall um, which I feel like will be good for September um, a sweater a little on the lighter side just with it being DK and having the eyelets and then have a sweater that's more perfect for thick and cozy for um, as it really cools down a little later in the fall and then I now showed you everything I've been knitting on and working on design-wise over the past two weeks since I last podcasted. But I do have one more thing I want to talk to you about before I go real quick. Okay, so in addition to doing my podcast, I've been interested in making other sorts of content for YouTube. Um, but already it's kind of difficult for me to make sure I consistently carve out the time for the podcast so I haven't want to been been trying to do um, worry too much about doing that but I decided next week I want to do my first 
um, other kind of content. I have tutorials up on YouTube, but I've never been like, this is a special video where I'm going to talk about this topic, um, which I'd like to do in the future. But next week I'm going to do a video that's not a podcast, but it's going to be pretty similar of me sitting, talking to camera, maybe showing some stuff. And that is going to be a AMA video or ask me anything. So I'm going to solicit questions from you right now and then also on my Instagram from people to hear what sort of things uh, people might want to know about either my design work or my thoughts on knitting in general or just my life. So if you have any question that you would like me to answer in my next video, uh, please leave it in the comments and I will uh, do my best to answer as many of those as I possibly can and I look forward to chatting with you then and then the following week I will be doing a another of my regular podcasts and if you've been following along thank you so much for continuing to join me I hope you enjoyed seeing updates on some of the things I've talked about before and if you're new here I'm so glad you stuck around this far hopefully you enjoyed yourself if you got to this part in the video um, but be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll get notified about future podcasts and all other videos and then always um, just like any form of content if you comment and like that just helps show the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed this video and it will help show it to more people so that they can check it out for themselves okay so thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble. I love to just talk about knitting, so I really am glad that you guys enjoy sitting with me for that. <laughs> okay, all right. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>